Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. You spoke and I listened. Do you guys want more tutorials? So here we have a splendid Wii tutorial on a common issue which we often reach for external libraries for which is very, very simple JavaScript. Today we're going to be talking about how to filter CMS items. So you have a bunch of CMS items and you click a link and it filters by some sort of category or whatever you choose that to be. We're also going to touch on a little bit of GSAP so if you want more GSAP tutorials then do speak up. I'd love GSAP. So with that let's get on with it. So here we just have a blank page and um, I'm going to show you soon the little system I've got here where I can write JavaScript locally and have it you know testing out in my Webflow project but for the sake of confusing things what I'm going to do in the body and I think I've named this test so if I save this and then while that's publishing, just uh, console log test page. So just refresh that and we see test page there. So with all that aside, I'll show you how to do that at another point. We've got a blank page here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all create a collection list that's going to take from a list of case studies um, and what I'm going to do is just use some basic styling in these. So we'll do a heading and we'll also do a paragraph just to show you the tag in which I've given each of these. So we'll do short just so it's easier. So blum blum. And then we'll take the heading from title, right? Just a bunch of case studies. I haven't done anything with them there. Let's just quickly show you the CMS collection. We've got three different types, which are a collection in of themselves, but you could just as well inside of case studies, just have a tag. You could type that whatever you want, but what these types are going to do, and I've got a reference field to that, um, the case study types, right? But you could just as well have a text field, you could have whatever, but what, what that's gonna do is that's gonna be the thing that we filter by. So logically, and what we're about to do next is create a list of links that represent that particular type. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Let's just give this a bit of styling right now. So let's do it by four. Um, in fact, let's do, let's give this a background image of the thumbnail image. And style this just some basic styling I will I'm not caring about the names of these or anything like that right now so don't shoot me for it and <clears throat> just just to finish off this little section here I'm going to give these an attribute right and this is this is kind of arbitrary it could be a class well actually no because you need to be able to read from the CMS field so actually yeah so let's do category and then let's assign that to the type. Uh, open that up and then just do the short name which represents that so we can see there's creator, originals and brand with the capital uh, letter in the beginning. Okay so we're kind of done with the CMS and this could be a huge CMS. This could this could be you know I mean this is the issue with with Webflow and I don't want to rant but you need to show every single CMS item. You might want to limit it, you might want to paginate it or, or whatever but um, for something small like this, where I don't anticipate hundreds and hundreds of case studies, it seems like a relatively good use case. So we have pretty much our CMS set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, technically I could do a collection list here to loop through those category types, but let's just keep it simple. Let's just give it, um, let's make it a list. Whack that up there. And inside of each of these, I'm just going to do a text link, uh, link, text link, uh, list item can't be placed inside a list. What are you doing? Come on. That's weird. Okay. Something's up with that. Something's up with that first one, whatever. Um, and the first one I'm going to do view all. So this is going to show all of the, all of the links, uh, all of the case studies. Uh, and what we've got, we've got creator here um, and we've got originals and we've got brand. So 
get rid of that space up there. Cool, and let's just style this real quick, make it a bit more um, digestible. Cool, so we have these. We have basically our um, set of links here. Now, I need a mechanism for the JavaScript to know what link I've clicked. I've clicked. I could take the inner text, but this could just as well say anything you like. So we want something a bit more consistent with that. What I like to use and what kind of works if JavaScript is not enabled is the href attribute. So what I'm going to do, call this one reset here, and this will make sense in a little bit. Um, I'm going to call this one, this is creator, so I'm just going to go creator here. Original and brand. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to read that in the JavaScript to determine which category I should filter through or look through inside of the um, collection here. I'm just going to wrap everything in a div and pop this in there. And this enables me to say, hey, grab this thing and then look for things inside of this, this thing here. So I like, I like using data attributes just because classes can change, styling can change, IDs can change, and it's not quite clear. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say data um, CMS filter, right? Just, just the name of my thing. I'm just going to copy that and leave that empty. And these are going to be, let's... Let's give this a data CMS filter um, links. Let's just do that. I'm going to copy those to my clipboard so I don't forget them. We pretty much have everything we need right now, and I'm just I'll publish that, and we have everything we need, right? Um, and you can obviously style these however you want. You can do whatever you want with these. I'm not the greatest at doing all that stuff. So jump into the JavaScript and start having a play. So the first thing I'm going to do is find our CMS filter. Okay. Document.query selector. And to get um, data attributes or any kind of attribute, you need the square brackets. And if I search my clipboard, I think that's the one. So now if I console log CMS filter, refresh this, and this is the beauty of having this set up, which I will show you in time. I don't need to publish my um, Webflow project. I don't need to do anything. So you can see we have our filter. Now let's get our links. And even though we know this is the only class, um, I love GitHub Copilot. So instead of searching in the document, what we're going to do, we're going to search inside of CMS filter. DM, data CMS filter, I think that was it actually, to be honest. This is how good the AI stuff is. So if you ain't got Copilot and you're writing code, you're missing out. So let's, um, we need to change this to actually links, I'm pretty sure. So let's do that and filter links. I want to get the links here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to type in an A there. So that should, if we just log out what we want to do, CMS filter links, refresh our page. Cool. So we've got all our links, which is great. What I like to do is go array dot from here, just to make sure it's, it's an array. Okay. Um, and similarly here, let's just double check our markup. Just for ease, let's get our data category. We don't need that. Cool. So we have all of our things. Let's start writing some serious JavaScript. The first thing I want to do is loop through all of our CMS links and add an event. <laughs> Look at that AI. Uh, let's handwrite it because I want to explain things pin through each of the CMS items, which you know is a link of uh, a list of four links, and we get access to each individual link. And with each individual link, we want to add an event listener. We want to do a click event, uh, click, and we want to fire this function, making sure to pass the event parameter here. And the first thing we want to do, because it's a link, when you click links, it jumps around, it, it goes to another page or whatever. So you do want to do um, e dot prevent default. That will prevent the default behavior of a link. And let's just console log. 
we we use the href as our thing, but we can get anything that starts with a hash, or at least if it's a full URL, we can get just the hash icon. So let me just show you the markup of that link, just so you know what I'm about. You've got the, um, that's interesting how that hasn't published either. Um, we've got this hash here, and that is what we're gonna use. It's really weird how that did not publish. Maybe I didn't do it, maybe I'm just high. Um, that was reset, wasn't it? So, reset, okay. If you know why that did not work, then do let me know. Pressing enter just to be sure. This is original. Enter, tab, whatever. And this is on oh, brand worked. There you go, tab, and publish this. So, we have our thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the code. We're already console logging that, so this should just work perfectly. So there it is, creator, original, brand, reset. So we have access to that. We might want to remove that hash because that might just cause us a bit of um, problems. So we can go sub string one. Now these, as you remember, reflect the data category, okay? And remember that, bear that in mind. So let's do the, let's do const category and then let's put that in there. So with each click, what we're gonna do, we're gonna loop through all of the CMS items, right? I'll remove that because I don't wanna do that. We're gonna loop through all of the CMS items with each and every click. And we're gonna test to see if that data attribute, so const, um, let's do link category there and let's do uh, category here. Uh, we're going to do link, actually we're going to do item, item dot data set category. And once again, let's log that. We want CMS items, that's why. Creator, originals, brand, creator, originals, brand, brand. Which should creator, originals, brand, creator, originals, brand, brand. It's looping through, it's getting that category, perfect. Now what we're gonna do, if we, are we gonna say if the link, if the category, category um, equals the link category, so the one we clicked, then all we're gonna do is, we're gonna do style, just to keep it simple, um, display equal block, else, we're gonna go item display num, so we're gonna hide all of them. You know, that was crazy simple, but let's have a look to see if that works. This should work. So there we go, creator. Brand, original, something up with or the original, creator originals, that's why. So the only other thing is now is to, um, click the reset button. So let's think about that. Um, we wanna display blocks. We have a line of code here that already does that. So we could just say, um, or link category equals reset. I like all actually, that was a good little suggestion there. So that again should be everything. Perfect. Now I have a bit of GSAP in here, so let's just have some fun. If you. I love GSAP. I've been using GSAP for many, many, many years and I'm pretty good at it. Um, if you want some GSAP tutorials from me, let me know because it will be super fun for me to do that. But I just kind of know off the top of my head now. So if we go gsap.from, we take all of our CMS um, filter items, then we want to go Y50 auto alpha, uh, alpha is zero, and then we go stagger, 0 0.025 is a nice, maybe five, is a nice number. If we do that, look at that, super easy. And what I've done in our version, um, I have set up uh, a new event, right? Const 
um, event equals new event and we've called it filter and on each click I want to um, how do we emit event let's use AI here love it emit the filter event let's see what it does because why not dispatch event cool let's just do that um, blah 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 CMS filter I probably want to do yeah CMS filter so on the CMS filter we're dispatching the filter event so on the so let's get that filter add event listener and we're going to add the filter event and on that filter event we are literally just going to do the same thing here and um, Let's do something const. Let's do a timeline. TL. And then we'll do TL restart, I think it is. Look at that. Oh. Amazing. I normally, one thing we didn't do before I just deleted all my files and all the rest of it is show that we can style the, the link that was clicked. And this is really, really simple. I can show this in code, so do excuse the, uh, the tardiness of this. What we've got, we're basically going to add an active class. So I'm assuming that there's an active class already on that view all link that we started with. We're going to go document.query selector. Um, we're going to go active. It's as if it's listening to me talk. Do you see that? Um, so what we've got here, document or query selector, we're finding that active view all link that's originally there. We're removing that active class. Then we're taking the target, which I, I know it's minified, but that that's the e dot target. That could be, I think that should be current target really. I would put to current target. And then we're adding the active class to the link that you've clicked. Thank you, AI, and thank you for watching. So that was a wee look at filtering CMS items using very simple JavaScript, zero libraries, and a hell of a lot of fun. So if you want to see more tutorials like this, then let me know in the comments below. If you haven't seen any of my videos and you like this sort of stuff, you like this video, then give us a subscribe. And YouTube will do its recommendation thing in three, two, one.